Okay, in this example, uh, we want to uh, consider um, how an uh, x-intercept of a function can, uh, can give us some practical information. Um, so um, uh, in this example, we're told that the semester demand, which we're calling uh, y, uh, for a particular uh, math textbook uh, measured in hundreds uh, is a function of uh, the price of the textbook x uh, measured in dollars. So uh, demand for an item is the uh, amount of the item uh, that can be sold. And so here we're considering uh, the um, uh, number of uh, math textbooks uh, that we can sell um, in a semester um, at a particular price. And so um, uh, this uh, linear function um, uh, relates that demand uh, to the price. So uh, this is called the demand uh, function for that reason. And what we want to do is uh, find the x-intercept uh, of this linear function. This is a linear function and uh, interpret it um, in a practical context. So uh, first let's start by uh, just finding the x-intercept and we're going to find the x-intercept um, uh, the same way uh, that we did in one of our earlier examples uh, to find the x-intercept uh, of a linear function uh, or for any function for that matter uh, represented by a formula. Uh, what you want to do is set the output uh, to zero uh, because the x-intercept corresponds uh, to the input uh, that matches an output of uh, zero. So um, uh, I'm going to set uh, the output uh, in my uh, function formula to zero. So I'm going to set y or f of x uh, to zero uh, in this function formula. And, um, and then I need to solve the resulting equation. Uh, and the solution to the resulting equation will be uh, the x-intercept. So let's see if we can solve this equation. And again, like in our prior example, there are uh, uh, several paths you can take to solving this equation. Um, here's what I'm going to do, however. Uh, first, let's start by uh, subtracting 15 uh, from both sides of the uh, equation. So I'll get uh, minus uh, 3 fortieths uh, times x is equal to minus 15. And now I'm going to multiply uh, the left and the right by the uh, reciprocal of minus 3 fortieths. Uh, because that will isolate uh, x by itself um, on the right-hand side of the uh, equation. So um, let me multiply the um, right-hand side by minus uh, 40 over 3, the reciprocal of minus 3 uh, 40ths. And then, of course, uh, we'll multiply uh, the left-hand side of the equation uh, by that same number. So um, on the right-hand side, um, uh, this uh, product uh, is easy now to calculate. Uh, minus times minus is going to be plus, of course. Uh, the 40s will divide out when we do the multiplication. The 3s will divide out when we do the multiplication. So we end up with just uh, plus x or x uh, on the right-hand side of the equation. And now let's see if we can uh, carry out this product on the left-hand side of the equation. Well, first thing, let's uh, deal with the sign here of the product. Uh, minus times minus is going to be plus, so our product will ultimately be positive. And when we multiply 40 thirds times 15, uh, we're going to get uh, 40 times 15 there uh, divided by uh, 3. And... Um, 3 divides into 15 five times, so I can go ahead and reduce uh, 15 over 3 uh, first. And then multiply 40 times 5, that's an easy calculation. So we get here that x is uh, positive 200. So there's our x-intercept. Um, it's going to be 200. So uh, the graph of this function is going to cross uh, the, uh, the x-axis uh, at uh, uh, the number 200 on the x-axis. Uh, but that's not now our uh, practical interpretation of the x-intercept. Uh, we want to explain uh, what the x-intercept means in terms of the inputs and the outputs um, for this particular problem. So remember here, uh, the output uh, from this function f, the uh, 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 quantity y, uh, that represented uh, semester demand uh, for a particular textbook measured in hundreds. And the input here, x, uh, that was the price for the textbook in uh, dollars. So um, if we think about um, the meaning of the x-intercept in that context, well, uh, we know that um, f of 200 is going to be equal to 0 because the x-intercept is the input that matches an output of 0. Uh, 
So in other words, when X is 200, uh, when the price is 200, the sem semester demand uh, is going to be uh, zero. Uh, the matching Y value, uh, in this case, the semester demand will be zero. Ah, so that tells us uh, our practical interpretation uh, for uh, uh, the uh, X intercept. Um, when the price of the textbook is uh, $200, Uh, the, the semester demand will be zero, or in other words, um, uh, no textbooks uh, will be sold. So apparently, um, that price 200 uh, is simply um, too high a price uh, for this textbook at that price. Uh, no consumer is going to be willing to buy uh, that textbook.